Guys, I made it. Little Miss Herman made it. <laughs> Decades ago, my family came here with barely a penny to their names, lived on the other side of San Francisco on the wrong side of the tracks, and look at me now. This is mine. It's my listing, not mine, but you know, that's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to show you guys around. Come on in. Oh, okay, this, I don't even know where to begin, guys, okay? This mansion is epic. It's 11,000 square feet, four floors with an elevator, mega, mega views. I mean, I don't know where to begin. But as Maria Von Trapp used to say, Let's start at the very beginning. Let's start at the very beginning. <laughs> Off key here, gosh. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the start. Okay, so a father and son architect team called Newsom Newsom, who actually built many homes around Pacific Heights, built this property for a guy named Julius Mack. That's why they call this house the Mack Mansion. Julius Mack, FYI, started his career as a Wall Street in New York, errand boy, and he moved to the West with only $20 to his name. Isn't that the classic, like, California, San Francisco, make it big, racks the riches story? I mean, kudos to him, right? Goals! So he came here, made it big, got into oil, and is living this palatial property. The property's only traded hands only a few times, actually, so after him, it was a judicial, legal, prominent family the Oryx, I think for several decades, and then the doctor owned it, another owner before my clients had the property too. So really, it's just quite rare to have a property that's been traded so little. And I can't wait to show you every single room because every room is such a gem. You're probably wondering why every room seems to have its own distinct personality. Well, that was by design. See, in San Francisco, there's this yearly event called the SF Decorator Showcase, where they pick one house out of all the homes in San Francisco to redo. And so there's only been about 42 ever, and our house is a 2017 pick. All proceeds obviously go to a nonprofit and a great cause and all that stuff. But what happens is all the celebrity designers in town come and nab one room, they all fight for it, and redecorate it up to the hilt. So this room was done by a Dutch artist, designer. So it has a lot of kind of a European, but classic look to it. He's modernized some stuff with some orb lighting here, but the beautiful like Corinthian columns, as well as these Gothic like architectural details here. So it's a nice nod to like this kind of like European vibe here. So it's really lovely and handsome. So this is this vibe here. And Brad Pitt obviously is a fan, cause you know, mm -hmm, he's lying down to make himself very, very comfortable. So um, let's check out a totally different different room with a different vibe, follow me. So here we are. This is my personal favorite. This is the Audrey Hepburn Givenchy room. You're like, what the hell is that? Yes, I said Givenchy. I love saying that word, Givenchy. It just sounds so like, psst. She, she, right? So this room was designed by my friend Jonathan Rockman, a SF famous interior designer, and it is basically April in Paris, and it's an homage to Audrey Hepburn, the, you know, actress for you youngsters who don't know, and the fashion designer um, Givenchy. So they had a lovely friendship way back in the day, and so this is his homage, April in Paris, to their friendship. So that's why you see lots of, like, foliage on the walls, and oh my gosh, Story about this lamp. Okay, so during the showcase period, this actually was sold or bought by someone else, and my client liked it so much, she had this shipped over from Europe to replace it. I think it was like over $10,000 or something like that, maybe even more, but anyways, it's gorgeous. Um, don't break anything, okay, don't break anything. This is the uh, Audrey Hepburn Givenchy room, the green room. Aren't you just green with envy? Onto this dining room. I mean, if this were my dining room, I would never lead. I'd be stuffing my face all day long. <laughs> right now, this dining area seems a little petite, but really, this could have a whole circular table here fitting probably 20 people if you wanted to. But forget about the decor. Look at the ceilings, they are just immaculate and exquisite. The amount of handiwork that was done here is just from a different era. And same thing with this woodwork. I mean, it's just gorgeous. 
And I love the fact that you can actually sit here and have a little retreat area. This is perfect for a Christmas tree uh, space, actually, just FYI. But you can see water views here even from the dining room, which, you know, is quite rare over here. So, yeah, look, I mean, I can get married here too. Mm -mm, yes. Oh, look at all these like gorgeous, gorgeous details. I mean, you can't replicate this nowadays. I mean, you could, but you spend a fortune, honestly. So these walls could talk. All right, I really want to show you something else, but it's going to be another whole different vibe. So fasten your seatbelts. I don't want to shock you guys, but we're going to go through the foyer, which we just came from. Follow me. And I'm not gonna actually point out this staircase because that goes down to the servants' quarters. Although we don't say servants now, we say the little helpers' quarters, right? And this is the back side. This is why it's lower ceilings, no ceilings, because back in those days, the help was not seen or heard because they would scurry up from their little quarters and come into this glorious kitchen. Ah! Look at this space. It's the size of a one or two bedroom apartment in San Francisco. I mean, my God, tall ceilings, my clients, I mean, the designers rather just busted out the entire space, completely redone. And it made such an impression. It was named by House Beautiful Magazine as Kitchen of the Year. Take that. <laughs> So nice extra long, big tiles here, triple sinks, tall ceilings again with this lovely architectural like art piece, like pot pan frying hanging thing. I don't cook, so don't ask me. Dual refrigerators, commercial grade stove here. I mean, it's just like to die for. And you know, when you say a nook, a nook is the size of this little cutting board with those two little chairs. This nook literally is most people in dining rooms. I mean, Oh, just sit here and have my little Cheerios. Mm -mm. Yeah, such a, such a waste. I need some company. Will you join me? To my left here is access to the yard and the elevators. So, uh, what's next? atrium it's gonna be hard but I've got something even better in store for us I had this custom made girl just to match the wallpaper because I love the closet so much uh-huh I came out the closet before but for this closet I will go back in yes I will <laughs> <laughs> I want to invite you all to my personal <laughs> boudoir <laughs> come on in this is the primary ensuite and it is just jaw dropping because aside from the size of it, it's just so tall, great ceilings, a little retreat area here, water views of the bay too. I mean, it's just such a beautiful oasis, fireplace. Girl, I'm never going to leave here. <laughs> no, I got to work, Herman. I got to pay my bills. Honestly. I love the fact that it's a lovely white cream color, but also on the ceiling, there's a really faint light blue kind of sky tone. So when you're lying in bed, actually, it makes you feel like you're looking up at the sky. So it's great for your you know, pupils, they say. Retreat area here, which is fabulous. Just, you know, reading here and your iPad. But look, there's downtown San Francisco. Water views, Marin. Why would you ever leave my room? Next up is this master closet. It's unfinished now, but clearly this a door could be put here and all of my shoes could be filled up to the brim here. Just call me a Meldo Marco Chan. <laughs> and here is also another special treat. Ensuite, which is almost like a spa. And these like chandelier light fixtures in this mansion literally are insanely obscene. Just absolutely beautiful. Look, 
his and her sinks or his and his or hers or hers or whatever, I mean, whatever. Um, but can you imagine just flossing your teeth here to this water view every day, waking up to this, brushing your teeth, popping your contacts in. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Soaking tub here, closet, and this shower, I think can actually fit four people. Although I did gain some weight, so maybe three, so, but you know. <laughs> Also on this floor is this corner here with this very glamorous closet. But behind me are two bedrooms en suite, which used to be actually one, but they were split off. So you have two bedrooms here, perfect for a home office, kids rooms, whatever. But coming here, look at these gorgeous Corinthian columns and these frames here. This is probably the most peaceful space in the whole entire house because the entire mansion revolves around this air vertical, which goes from the first floor up to the top to those tinted skylights. Original, these arcs, this detail, and these like wallpaper birds, just gorgeous, right? <laughs> and here you have another ensuite, bedroom and slash or playroom with its own private balcony. This is a four-story mansion. Every four-story mansion needs an elevator. This goes to every single story. And finally, Let's ascend the staircase for this top level carousel of windows that showcases this million, no, billion dollar view of Alcatraz, Marin, the East Bay, downtown San Francisco. This whole entire patio spans the width of the whole house. Look at these huge, huge doors, floor to ceiling, left to right, wall to wall. And then, Entertainers need the wet bar. Sink, under counter, fridge, freezer, wine storage here. And then you have your lounge area here. <laughs> Great place to entertain, lounge around, and just when you sit here, you have literally a 180 degree view of the San Francisco Bay Area. You're living in a postcard. Finishing off this top floor, yes, there's more, is one of two laundry rooms in this room. This is probably the most glamorous laundry room I have ever seen. And there is even a space for little Fifi to take her little spa bath. <laughs> Incredible. This corner here is another office slash bedroom with its own little patio terrace off the side there. And then you have this connecting bathroom, which we used to call his or hers or him and him and hers and hers bathrooms. But check this out. Isn't this uber cool? It feels very West Hollywood, LA type thing. And then here we have a very executive, handsome looking office, which could be a bedroom as well, right? With its own little retreat area, perfect for zooming. And then another outdoor zone here with a mega views of the waters. So every room up here has its outdoor patio. This top floor is a circular layout around this atrium skylight. So there's a lot of walls here for displaying all of your art. And here we are back again to the elevator, which brings us back all the way down, if you don't want to do stairs, to the ground floor. Here we are in the ground floor level of this mansion. Originally, this whole level was for the help, and it could be still used that way if you have like 
a governess, a chef, a driver. There are multiple rooms down here to house all of them actually. Or seal this off and this whole thing could be a whole enclosed ADU in-law unit. Or actually if you work from home or have a home-based business, these could all be office cubicles as well. So lots of options. Here, bedroom right now, walk-in closet, beautiful ensuite. All right, and then behind me is a very cool room, great for lounging, maybe a game room, a pool room, also separate entrance to the back too, so if you ever rented this place out, this could be their entryway in the living room. But what I like about this room is that actually, if you want it as the bedroom, there's these beautiful kind of enclosed hidden pocket doors, which close in and out. Over here, another bedroom, which is used as a spa room currently and a bedroom and a bathroom. Again, if you need another ensuite, another hidden door here, this creates another ensuite right behind you. Pretty clever, huh? Hey. <laughs> Here is the laundry room, the second one, that's correct. This is the bigger one, so it's the more utilitarian version of the one upstairs, which is very glamorous. But please note, there's water here already, so if you wanted to convert something into a kitchenette here to service all these rooms, easy peasy. All right, all right down these steps to my left here is a big storage room. It could be a gamer room or wine tasting room. Extra storage is never a bad thing. But check out this garage. Now most garages, in San Francisco, especially around this period, had very dinky garages because who had cars back then, right? But check out how big this is. And it's finished because a prior owner had multiple children and he created this into like a playroom rec room for them. So easily fits multiple cars. And if that's still not enough, you have a huge flat motor court out here. Plenty of room to park all your cars. If you want to put a little greenery here, you can too. Automatic gate. The entire corner lot is gated, so hyper private and isolated. And you are one block, actually, from Billionaire's Row. So, mm-hmm. It's a who's who of the finance and tech world and just the glitterati. So you're gonna be in great company. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Are you impressed? <laughs> it's glamorous, it's beautiful, it's historic. I call it the Empress of Pacific Heights. <laughs> if you want a tour, give me a ring and I'm happy to show you 2690 Pacific anytime. Bye.